Thanks very much, Derek. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about now is um, are some of the findings from the module that was funded by DE. So thank you very much to the Department of Education for funding them. And it's looking at children's attitudes to sharing education. This builds on questions that we had in 2012. So we have a little bit of a time series here and all of the data will be available on the web if you want to have a look at it yourself. Okay. So just a little bit of context, most of you will already know this, but for those of you who don't, Northern Ireland has a slightly different um, education system than the rest of the UK because we still have a system of um, grammar schools and secondary schools. But I think we're, we're probably more well known for the divisions that we have in our schools around, uh, around religious lines. And so the majority of Catholic children attend uh, maintain Catholic maintained schools and the majority of Protestant children tend to um, attend schools that are uh, controlled. So around 7% of children or so would attend schools that are, that are more mixed than that. But it has been suggested that one of the outcomes of this is that uh, our children in Northern Ireland grew up with a sort of a, a sense of preferring to be with people of their own community background. Um, this is shown as early as about age three or four, where children prefer to the symbols and identify with symbols that are associated with their own community. So over the years, there's been a number of initiatives that have been put in place across our educational system that are aimed to really try and overcome some of these divisions. And the general aim really is based around the contact hypothesis, which is that if, if children and young people come together and get to know each other, then there's some sense that they may then become more aware and respect the values of, of the other children. So it's that sort of us and them in group by group. But one of the things that has been coming clear over the years is that really this is about contact that needs to be a bit more sustained and it needs to be of, of fairly good quality. So some of my colleagues in School of Education have been uh, looking at this for a long time. And that's through, it can be through integrated uh, schools and more recently shared education and more recently still shared campuses here in Northern Ireland. So since around 2000, there have been some uh, shared education programs and we've now got to stage where quite a number of schools now and a number of pupils are involved in sharing education. So with that in mind, government in 2012 established a ministerial advisory group and their remit was really to look at how we can advance shared education. So I think the understanding was that there was shared education and then it was they were looking at how to advance it. Now the remit was beyond just simply Catholic Protestant divisions. It was around looking at equality across all of the groups in Northern Ireland. I was involved in that. I wrote two of the chapters in the original, um, the MAG report. So it's something that I'm um, quite interested in and quite familiar with. So really reflecting the conclusions and the, the suggestions that were made by the Ministerial Advisory Group, DE in 2015 produced their report, which is Sharing Works, a policy for shared education. And basically the aim is to take shared education forward, but um, building in all of the, the ideas around shared education right across the educational system. So I was interested in, in how this fitted with what I was going to be talking about today. And what I found was that they have key action points that are in that report that relate very well to uh, what we're talking about today. And that is, they want to uh, ensure they commission and evaluate um, shared education because without evidence, you know, we need evidence to back up all of the, the sort of claims that we're, we all make as researchers. So using, using that evidence and also to promote engagement with children and young people, which is very important and very important in terms of what June has said, that the children don't want to be left behind. They want to be included as well. and They need to be included in all of the discussions around um, how shared education is going to be taken forward. So DE then asked us to put uh, a module of questions in Young Life and Times and in Kids Life and Times in 2015, asking the young people, children and young people, about their attitudes towards shared education. Now, this is the definition of shared education that we have used in Young Life and Times and Kids Life and Times before. So we didn't change that. So there's sort of comparisons with um, one questions that we've asked before. So it's basically around children getting together with other schools and other pupils and things that they might do. So we had suggestions about the kind of things, to get, particularly with the younger children, to give them some sense of what it is we're asking here uh, around sharing education. So have they done projects? Have they done classes, um, shared facilities? And then on the basis of that, 
the children are asked, have you ever shared? Have you ever been involved in sharing activities? And as you can see, 58% of kids' life and times and 51% of young life and times respondents said that they had uh, engaged in some of these shared activities. Now, they were asked later about um, other activities they might have done, and there were some, like going to dancing competitions and things, but this is, this is what they were asked to focus on in terms of um, when we were asking the questions about uh, how they experienced and how much they enjoyed shared education. And in fact, the 58% is the same for kids' life and times. The question was asked exactly the same way in 2012. Um, and it was exactly the same proportion who said that they had shared as well. So those who said they had shared then were asked about what have you done, what kind of activities have you done, and based on the definition that we'd given them, they were asked did they do projects, did they share classes, and did they share facilities. As you can see, doing projects seemed to be uh, the option that they chose most, that they had, they had shared projects, they'd done projects with other schools, slightly less likely to have um, shared classes and shared facilities. And you'll see later that that's really um, more to do with, I think, their age in terms of sharing classes. So they were asked then how much they enjoyed doing this sharing, how much they, w whether they agreed for they had a five-point Likert scale, from strongly agree to strongly disagree, about how much they enjoyed it. And as you can see, they were fairly positive overall. Um, particularly about doing projects. For some reason, that seems to be one of the things that they, they, really, enjoy, um, they really enjoy doing, and that comes through later on as well. Uh, then they were asked about whether the pupils that they shared with were of a different religion to them. So we're focusing in now on, on, on what, they, what their experiences of this. And as you can see, they have shared with children from, um, from other, religion, other religious groups. I think what stands out here is the fact that the primary school children, 40% of them said they didn't know. And I guess you would expect that with, um, with children of that age, that either they're not aware of it or they don't, it's just something maybe they're not focused on. Whereas with the older children, I think, and I think this came through quite a, well, uh, quite a lot in 2012, is that it's this idea about going to another area with your school uniform on, which kind of identifies in you a little bit more as, as, as you get older uh, for the older group. Okay, so I've broken this down by just uh, a few of the characteristics that we have included in the survey, as Dirk showed earlier. Um, one thing to say is that I didn't do a lot of statistical tests in this because when you have big numbers like 5,000 and 1,000, any difference is highlighted and will become statistically significant. So I just want to give you a sense here. Uh, the data are all available, so you can do your own analysis if you want, but I just want to give a sense here of of the sort of percentages of children that are, are, are um, saying this. One of the key things that comes through this module all the way through is that girls are more positive and like more um, sharing activities. Uh, and in all cases, and in, in every question that we've asked more or less, this difference has been there. Um, so females are more positive in terms of doing projects, classes, and sharing facilities. Not a lot of difference among the younger. We don't ask the young children their religion, um, but we have the school they attend. Uh, so there's not really that much difference in terms of, of um, their enjoyment of sharing for the younger children. I looked at the uh, school type for the young life and times, and there are a few differences, but nothing really, I think, that would are too stark. I would, I would just warn that I'd be careful about the integrated young people attending planned integrated schools. Some of the numbers get very small. Um, for enjoyed having classes, we're only 19, so I was reluctant then to break that down in, in any further. So in a few cases, uh, the numbers are a bit too small to stand over. There doesn't seem to be a lot of difference, again, uh, with the older um, respondents in terms of their religion. I think Protestant 67 enjoyed having classes slightly less than some of the other groups, but overall, there, there aren't a lot of differences there, as you can see. This question was asked of all children, so this is also includes the, the, um, the 40 odd percent of, of young people who hadn't shared. It's basically a question about getting a sense of how the children feel about sharing uh, these activities, so around whether they like it a lot or, or not like it as much, uh, very much. And so what you can see for this is the kids' life and times. I hope this isn't getting too confusing with kids' life and times, KLT, young old. Um, this is the kids' life and times, the P7s. 
And basically, the thing they like most, and again, this comes through later on as well, very strongly, that they like making new friends. That seems to them to be something that they really think this sharing um, gives them an opportunity to do. Um, they don't mind sharing, they quite like sharing with different ethnic groups, different religious groups. What they don't seem to like so much is um, getting different teachers and traveling to different schools. And again, that comes through very much um, in terms of looking at the older young people as well and, and is reflected back in what we asked in 2012. It seems to be that seems to be the area where they're, they're a wee bit more concerned um, about whether they would like this or not. So for the older ones, this is sort of a similar pattern. Again, making new friends, again, seems to be the thing that they focus on, that they really want to do. You can see, again, getting different teachers and traveling to different school is something they're not just as keen on. And I think, as I said earlier, it's this idea about traveling into another area with a particular school uniform on, and some of the children raised that in the, in the survey in 2012. But overall, I mean, overall, they all quite like sharing. Um, activities. Then all the children and young people were asked about, they were given a list of different types of schools or different types of children that they might be, they might be asked to share with and how they would feel about that. So whether would they mind it a lot, mind a little, not mind at all or don't know. And you can see there that generally the kids like in times again, so P7s, are um, fairly positive overall. They are very happy to mix with, they would not mind at all, children with special needs, um, local primary school. What they don't like is, they, is mixing with secondary school. So it's an age thing. They don't particularly want to share with big children. Um, and that's probably in their mind because they're moving on to that big school soon. So it's like, no, let's just stay where we are here for now. Uh, one of the interesting things that emerges is if you look at the first two, an all boys primary school and an all girls primary school, if you break that down by gender, what you find is that at 10 and 11, the boys don't want to share with the, with the girls and the girls don't particularly want to share with the boys. Funny enough, when you get to 16, that's a very different story. <laughs> all of a sudden, it's really fine to be mixing with an all-girls school or an all-boys school. So there's no gender difference there whatsoever. And that is, again, a reflection of the age. Um, but again, overall, the, the, the young life and times respondents through this are, are more positive overall. And I think it's possibly, even though they're slightly less likely to have said they've shared, but they seem to have a better sense of... of you know, of, of thinking about the things that I suppose that their age, they're, they're able to think through some of these things, whereas the younger children uh, perhaps are not. But overall, uh, Young Life and Times respondents were um, more positive overall. So uh, then we asked about shared campus. This is one we didn't ask in 2012, so this was new for um, 2015. And they were asked to, the DE gave us a, a definition to include in the two surveys. And you can see now that the focus is much more on the Protestant Catholic divide here. So a shared campus school is sharing with pupils from Protestant and Catholic schools. Um, and what the children were asked then, and the, 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 um, both surveys, what they were asked to do then was to think about if their school was a shared campus. And they were given four things that, that could be part of this school that they would be sharing. Uh, one school entrance. Um, shared sports hall, shared bus and one school uniform. And again you can see what they had to do was multiple response so they just ticked. So if they ticked it that meant they thought it was what, what they would want. So young life and times respondents are much more likely to, to tick the, the different options. Uh, kids life and times, children weren't. So overall um, they were most positive. The children were primary school children didn't like the idea much of sharing sports and dining hall. They seemed to have this idea that in 2012 what we found was some of them said that schools, if you merge schools and they come together, that there can be overcrowding and that there can be maybe opportunities for bullying and things. So I think maybe for the younger children that's in their mind. However, we didn't ask them, so this is the, the downside of doing um, a survey. But overall, Young Life and Time response were fairly positive about all of the different elements that they were asked about. So then we asked them whether they would like or uh, not like a shared campus school. And uh, in terms of liking it a lot, you can see that the Young Life and Times respondents again were more positive than the, the P7s. But I think it's interesting that about a quarter of them in both surveys said they don't know. So this is maybe a new concept that's coming through and they haven't really had time to, to think about whether they would really like this or not. 
what I did was I just I just wanted to have a look at that by um, a very the very first variable that said have you shared or not, uh, just to see if there would be a lot of difference between children who were already engaged in all the sharing activities and those who were not. Overall, there wasn't a lot of difference, as you can see. The children who were in have been involved in sharing activities in both surveys were slightly more positive um, about whether they would like it or not about the shared campus than those who hadn't been involved. But it's not a, a, a massive difference, really, uh, across the two surveys. And then there's my, my favourite word clouds. As a quantitative researcher, looking at um, 5,000 answers to an open-ended question, it's just a nightmare. And then you discovered word clouds, which just really just put it all together for you and let you see the inter just a very quick overview of the children's actually thinking, what words are they using, what's coming into their mind. And I think the key thing in this, this is young li uh, kids' life and times, is the word like comes through much more than dislike. So overall, they were more positive when they were given their open-ended uh, responses. And the thing, again, that com comes through all the time is it's just making new friends. Make, meeting new people and making new friends, that's what comes through. And that's reflected as well in Young Life and Times. So exactly the same thing that's coming through. Um, there's lots of, of different quotes from them, but overall, they're positive. They're talking about liking this idea. Um, and a lot of that is around making new friends. So just a couple of, of conclusions, really. I mean, what we found from this module was that it sort of uh, supported the findings that we had in 2012 and show that overall children and young people are fairly positive towards shared education. They also reflect as well w that we had um, reported in the MAG report that uh, generally in Northern Ireland there is a, a sort of a belief that shared education is something that maybe we should be thinking more about and something that does need to be taken forward. But one of the things we just need to bear in mind is that not all children and young people are overwhelmingly positive about sharing education and I think we need to address some of their concerns. I think this is, was well reflected in 2012 with the Children's Commissioner work with children and young people to supplement or worked with us in, in turn we did the survey and they did all of the, the focus groups um, and workshops with children and young people. And what was the, one of the key messages coming through was the children felt they needed to be consulted. Before all the adults all around them were making these decisions about shared education, they needed to be consulted. And I think that fits very well and is, is very well represented in DE's strategy, which is around their key words, the, the core principle, one of them that uh, underpins this new strategy is that there's the inclusion there, I've, I've put it in bold, children and young people need to be involved as well, along with all of the adult stakeholders this is the way that it will be taken forward successfully with everyone involved. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.